Ladies and gentlemen, my name is John Bain, and I'm here to ask and answer a simple question. What is net neutrality? You've probably heard the term before, but perhaps don't fully understand what it means or haven't had the time to properly look into it. Here's a quick and simple guide to what net neutrality is and why it's important. If you'd like to find out more, I've put some links in the description below this video. Net neutrality is the principle that all online traffic should be treated equally. This means that if you pay for a certain speed of internet connection, you should be able to use all of that speed all of the time, regardless of which site or service you're using. This idea is important to make sure that you get your downloads quickly, you're able to watch online video like Netflix or YouTube without any problems, you can play games without being affected by lag, and you can load your favorite websites without having to wait. This all sounds very sensible, right? Who could be against making sure that our internet service works correctly? Well, the answer is that some ISPs want to be able to charge users and online companies alike for what they call a fast lane. What that really means, though, is that they'll be able to slow down a user or company's connection if they don't pay up. Make no mistake, the internet will not get faster with these so-called fast lanes. Websites in the fast lane will trundle along at the same speed they always did, and everything else will be dumped into a slow lane. It's like saying, well, the speed limit right now for cars is 70 miles per hour, but if you pay for this fast lane, you can drive in it at 70 miles per hour. But everybody else has to drive in the slow lane at 30 miles per hour. You didn't make anyone faster by doing that, you just slowed down the people who weren't willing to pay you extra money for the services they should be getting anyway. The end result of abolishing net neutrality is that the quality of your service could degrade and your internet bill could rise. Right now, you pay one price for your internet connection every month. But if huge companies like Time Warner and Comcast had their way, they would have the ability to charge you extra every month to watch Netflix or use Facebook, on top of many already trying to impose bandwidth caps on how much data you can download every month. This would be like a water company charging you extra because you decided to use your water for coffee instead of the laundry. The water company doesn't have any right to dictate what you use your water for, they can only charge you for the water itself. An electricity company doesn't charge you for premium electricity for your television, they can just charge you for the electricity that you use, not what it's used for. Some internet service providers want to be able to dictate what you can and can't use, and worse still, they have a vested interest in doing so. Companies like Comcast and Time Warner also sell television services, and television viewership has been declining year on year due to competition from services like Netflix and Amazon Instant Video. These internet service providers have a vested interest in slowing down their competition. If they succeed in abolishing net neutrality, they will be given power over the internet itself and gain the position of kingmaker. They get to decide what you watch, they get to decide which companies succeed, and all the while perpetrating a massive conflict of interest by also providing their own content. In the worst case scenario, a site could be slowed down so much that it would prevent users from even accessing it, effectively censoring the content. This is contrary to freedom of speech and the ideal of a free and open internet that encourages technological innovation, a strong economy, and healthy competition. That's what net neutrality is, and that's why it's important. If you'd like to know more about net neutrality, I've posted some links in the description below. If you're in the United States and would like to take action to prevent the end of net neutrality, I would suggest looking up your local congressmen and state senators. Contact them by phone or in writing and ask them to protect the principles of net neutrality. Also consider contacting the FCC, who currently holds a great deal of power over the rules and regulations that ISPs must abide by. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.